Bom, 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 bom. They said it couldn't be done, Tucker. They said you couldn't make a gluten-free baguette. Well, we're here today on Mission Impossible Gluten-Free Baguette. Hey, it's Martin and Tucker. We're here in the studio today on Mission Impossible. We're making gluten-free baguettes. And the truth is, is that it is actually possible through the power of our gluten-free bread flour. Let's show you how to do it. Gluten-free baguettes. For the first time ever, it's easy. First in the bowl, I've got this gluten-free bread flour. And then I've got salt and instant yeast and a little bit of sugar. And the sugar is gonna help with browning. And I'll just stir briefly to combine my dry ingredients. And then I've got my water. This is tepid water, so uh, you know, in a studio like this, which is often cold, I've, I'm using like slightly warm water. And then just stir to combine. One thing to note here is that the quantity of water that's used in a lot of gluten-free baking is higher than it would be in a wheat-based dough. And so you're going to mix this together and you're going to say, boy, this looks pretty sticky. I'm concerned. Martin told me to make these baguettes and they look like they're going to be really soft. Um, but as the starches hydrate, they will absorb that water and having that high water content as with a wheat-based dough will help us to get a more open crumb. And I'm just stirring this to smooth it out. This is not a dough I'm gonna put on the counter and knead. It's too sticky for that. But during fermentation, you're gonna see it firm up and it'll actually be relatively manageable by the time we go to divide and shape. And that's it. I'm gonna cover and let it rise for 15 minutes and then we're gonna give a fold. Okay, 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, I'm gonna give the first fold. I like to have a little bit of water and you can use your hand for this. This is just a regular bowl fold for those of you who are making bread at home. This is a bowl fold. In this case, with the gluten-free, I like to use a flexible scraper. So a little bit of water and then I just come from the outside and press into the middle, sort of turning the bowl as I go. And this is helping to just smooth it out. It's just sort of smoothing that dough out a little bit. And that's it. And make sure that in between the folds, as always, use a moisture proof cover. Use something that's sort of airtight and that will keep us from drying out. Another 15 minutes and then we'll come back and fold again. Okay, fold number two. Let's see what's going on here. You can see how this dough is already smoothing out some. So again, with my flexible scraper, I'm gonna come in and from the outside to the middle, I'm working my way around the dough. And you can see, this looks like, it looks like dough. One of the things I like about this is that it's starting to feel like something that I recognized. Most of my experience is with gluten, right? And so one of the sort of amazing things about this is that it does actually begin to feel more like what I would expect from a dough that has gluten. Except it doesn't. That's good. We'll leave that for another 15 minutes and we'll fold it again. Working with this flour, I get excited to bake with it. And I will just say that this flour developed by our test kitchen and innovation team is the best that I've worked with in terms of gluten-free bread making. I never really thought I could make a baguette that was gluten-free before this. So that's why I look excited when I come to work with this dough. Okay, this is fold number three. Let's just get in here and do it. Beautiful, smooth dough. Look at that. That looks good to me. Okay, fourth fold. And same as all the others. I'm just working around the bowl, lifting the dough, pressing it into the center. And, you know, don't be too uptight about these folds in terms of the timing. There is some flexibility in there. If one goes 30 minutes and one goes 15 or one goes 10 and then another one goes 25, don't stress about that. You just, over the course of fermentation, want to gather and press and sort of help the dough to smooth out. That's it. Okay, so I've got a beautiful marshmallowy dough. Um, 
the last rise, the untouched portion, is 60 to 75 minutes. If it goes 90 minutes, don't fret. That's all good. This is a very stable dough. It's not going to collapse in the same way that a uh, glutinous dough might. Okay, so a little bit of flour on the top, and then I'm just going to invert it. Boop. And I'm going to divide this into three pieces. They're about 300 grams each, give or take, somewhere right around, right around there. Now what I'm going to do is give what I would call a tubular pre-shape. And the reason for the tubular pre-shape is to help us make a more even final form. So this is like a stop along the destination to beautiful baguette. So a little bit of a pre-shape, which makes a tubular form so that when we go to roll the final, it's a little bit more even. So I pat it sort of in this direction, I give it some pats, and then I come from the outside and I just pat with only the pressure required to sort of make these pieces stick together. And then I just roll down from the top. Boop. And then when we go to roll the baguette, because I'm already with this shape, you can see that all I really need to do is gently and evenly roll side to side, and then we're pretty much there. So there's my first one. Let me show you again. I pat gently to the gas. And if you've shaped baguettes before, you'll recognize this. You can see lots of videos on the YouTube channel of us making baguettes that are not gluten-free but the technique is very similar. And the beautiful thing is that this good flour allows me to use some of my artisan skills and apply them here. Okay, so there's my second tubular, appreciate it. It's tubular. Okay, last one. Again, patting gently, sort of on an east-west axis to get an even thickness. And then coming in from the outside, I'm just going to fold it a little bit to square off those sides like this. And if you've got a little bit of a funky situation there, just roll with it. Just, we like the funk. Okay. If you're working out here where there's more bench flour and you find that those seals don't quite adhere, move to where there's a little bit less flour. You'll be happier. And I'm just pressing with the pressure required to seal. And if you find yourself sticking a little bit or something, just use your best friend here. And then we're going to set these. We're just going to let them relax a little bit. And then we'll come back and roll them. And in the meantime, cover your stuff. When it's on the bench, make sure you cover it. And a towel is not really going to do it. A towel is not, um, a towel allows some evaporation to occur, and we don't really want that. Um, sometimes if you're just going to rest them for a minute, it's okay to use a towel. You'll see me doing it sometimes, but most of the time, just be extra cautious about covering it, especially if you have air conditioning or if it's a really dry season. So cover these and let them rise for about 15 minutes, and then we'll come back for the final shape. All right, so I'm about to shape the baguettes. Before I do that, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down on my baker's linen. If you don't have baker's linen, you could use a tea towel or a dish towel or an apron. An apron is often really nice and it's because it's kind of thick. And voila, look at that. And I want just a little bit of flour on my surface, just a little bit. You don't want too much. You don't want too much, just a little bit. So when I roll these, I want to roll them to the length of my baking stone, right? So be mindful of the length of your baking stone and roll to that length. That's the length that I like. So I begin in the middle and I roll back and forth and I sort of get this dog bone situation. See I've got this sort of like dog bone. I'm getting this down to the diameter that I want for the final baguette. So I go down a little bit and then I go in with both hands and I just roll until I get the length that I want. Back and forth. See I'm rolling back and forth. And the beautiful thing here with this dough is that even if you're not perfect, you can sort of come in with your hands and just manipulate it a little bit and give yourself a pointy tip. And that's good enough. I'm going to put it over here, seam side up. So you see that seam that I made when I made the tubular pre-shape? I'm going to keep that seam up for right now. And then when I go to bake, I'm going to invert it. Let's do it again. So on a very lightly floured surface, Beginning in the middle, with one hand, I make a dog bone, basically like that. And then I go in with two hands, 
and I just roll to the edges. And as I get out to the ends, I just apply a little bit more pressure to give a little bit of a taper because I like a pointy tip on a baguette. We're going to let these proof covered 45 minutes, even 60 minutes, even a little bit longer if it's cool in your house or if they feel like they're not quite marshmallowy yet. But 45 to 60 minutes is pretty much my sweet spot. See you soon. The best time of baking is actually baking. It's my favorite part. Okay. So, after shaping these baguettes proof, as with all leavened products pretty much, the amount of time that it takes for them to proof depends on a lot of things from ambient conditions to the quantity of yeast, type of dough, etc., etc., etc. Basically what I'm looking for with this is that they're a little bit marshmallowy. And these, at about an hour since I started proofing them, feel marshmallowy. These are ready to go. And the nice thing about this gluten-free dough is that if I want a little bit pointier tip, like right at this moment, I can just make it a little bit pointier. So I'm using my transfer peel to move them around. And once I get them over here, I'm just looking to make sure that they're distributed pretty well on the parchment, yeah. So baguettes, like a lot of artisan breads, are scored before they go into the oven. Using the razor, I'm gonna tell the bread where it should expand. You could also do this with a sharp knife. Let's bake, Tucker. Come on. Woo! They said it couldn't be done. No, I think that looks good. I'm, I'm happy with that. So to make a baguette that sort of defines the category for me, it needs to be crisp. It needs to have a somewhat open structure. I didn't think it was possible. And then we developed this bread flour and I was like, oh, I gotta try that. Like the carrot of challenge was too much to resist. It smells malty. I mean, it's super crisp. Listen to this. This is not some squishy, gluten-free sadness. Looks like actually artisan bread. I think for gluten free, that's amazing. It tastes good. I'm happy. I mean, listen, like a couple years ago, someone would say, Oh, Martin, you should make a gluten free baguette. And I would like laugh out loud because I thought, It's impossible. It's not possible. And I don't know if I told you this, but um, I made some at home and I left them out on our bread bench where there's always a collection of different breads and stuff and uh, nobody realized that they were gluten free. Which to me was like, that's kind of confirmation. That's all the confirmation I need because I have some like very um, well educated baguette eaters at home. Yep, so gluten free baguette. Crusty. I mean, it's crisp. One thing that I would note about the bake, and that is, don't be shy about leaving them in the oven. Um, you can even turn the oven off and let them coast for a while and pull out some more of the moisture. The starches that are used in the flour blend require more water, and so the dough has more water, so it takes more time to get a crisp crust. So don't be shy about leaving them in the oven. Bake to full color uh, for best results. Beautiful bread. I'm happy. Gluten-free baguettes.